When people talk about escapism, video games are often part of the discussion, especially with how seemingly bleak real life has become in recent years. So what happens when a developer asks the question, what if we made a video game where you're trying to pay off your mortgage? Well, that wouldn't quite seem like the kind of escapism most people are looking for. But here we are in 2020, just a few days before the release of a new game in the Animal Crossing franchise, a series that has made its name for being just that, a debt management simulator. Now, I know that's an oversimplification of what makes Animal Crossing so popular amongst fans of its many titles. Animal Crossing is much more than a debt management simulator. Wikipedia lists it as a social simulation video game, and I think that taxonomy does well to help explain what Animal Crossing is really all about. Animal Crossing is one of a handful of games that asks you to find joy in the mundane. There are no flashy action sequences or huge narrative twists. Tom Nook doesn't turn into an enormous Tanuki Titan right before you pay off your mortgage, where only by defeating him in combat will you truly be free of your debts. There's just life happening from day to day. The success of the Animal Crossing franchise has meant that myriad games have followed in its footsteps, but at the time, there wasn't really anything like Animal Crossing. Launched in Japan on the N64 in 2001, and here in the States on the GameCube in 2002, Animal Crossing was, and still is to a certain extent, a unique beast amongst Nintendo's expansive canon of games. So what does all this talk of social simulation and mundanity mean for the game itself? Video game philosopher and former Kotaku.com contributor Tim Rogers says that at its core, Animal Crossing teaches children to behave amicably within communities and to hate landlords. And while the idea that Animal Crossing's social simulation manifests more as class struggle than neighborly friendship, the original impetus behind Animal Crossing would definitely lean more towards the latter. Animal Crossing creator Katsuya Iguchi got the idea for Animal Crossing when he first moved from his home in Shiba to Kyoto. In a 2008 interview with Edge, Iguchi talked about how his first years with Nintendo, and his first years away from his home, helped form the idea for Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing features three themes, family, friendship, and community. But the reason I wanted to investigate them was a result of being so lonely when I arrived in Kyoto. When I moved there, I left my family and friends behind. In doing so, I realized that being close to them, being able to spend time with them, talk to them, play with them, was such a great, important thing. I wondered for a long time if there would be any way to recreate that feeling. And that was the impetus behind the original Animal Crossing. This feeling of solitude in a new place is one I'm very familiar with, but in a slightly different form than Aguchi. Living in a dorm in college, I'd gotten very used to being just down the hall from all my friends. So when I moved back home and into my own place, it took some readjusting now that my friends were all off in other states. And looking back on that, I can see exactly why Yaguchi made Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing asks you to just take your time in exploring and enjoying your town and getting to know its inhabitants. Go fishing, plant some flowers, talk to your neighbors, walk along the beach and collect some shells. This is the essence of Animal Crossing. It's life. A life you can enjoy amongst friends, digital though they may be. And the game's social simulation aspect comes from just that. Your character's ability to interact with the other residents of your town. Each some uniquely anthropomorphized animal or another. Each with their own personalities and their own tastes as to what makes their house a home. You'll do any number of fetch quests for your neighbors, if you care enough to do their chores for them, all of which are as mundane as low stakes as any favor you'd do for an actual neighbor. Maybe one of the townsfolk is running low on their favorite fruit. Well, you can pick some for them if you want. Maybe one of them wants your opinion on which new couch they should pick out for their home. Much like in real life, you can interact with or ignore your neighbors as much as you want, though the game obviously incentivizes the former. And aside from being a good neighbor, there's also a kind of zen to be found in cleaning up your town. Pulling weeds, planting trees and flowers in pleasing arrangements, painting houses. By building these neighborly tasks into its gameplay loop, Animal Crossing, in a way, became the digital distillation of the May I Borrow a Cup of Sugar neighborhoods of yesteryear. But Animal Crossing, while conceptualized as a means of creating and interacting positively within digital communities, provides a multitude of other mundanities for you to participate in while wandering around your town. My absolute favorite thing to do in Animal Crossing was dig up dinosaur bones and submit them for inclusion in the local museum. 
Getting your discoveries into the museum is a multi-step process, each somehow more mundane than the next. Fossils that you find in the wild are mysteries to you. After all, you're not a paleontologist, you're just trying to pay off your mortgage. So you need to send them off through the mail to the aptly named Faraway Museum for identification. And much like with real mail, you'll need to wait an appropriate amount of time for a response. Eventually, they'll send the newly identified fossil back to you, at which point you can take it to Blathers, the museum curator, for inclusion in his exhibits. And you can also do what I did, which was acquire a vast personal collection of fossils and give the discards and duplicates to the museum. Unfortunately, I couldn't charge my neighbors for entry into my personal museum, and thus more quickly pay off my loans. Now, I fell in love with Animal Crossing as a kid, in all its achingly slow and plodding glory. And I can't wait to finally get my hands on New Horizons. Hopefully old fans of the series like me and complete newcomers can find the same joy in Animal Crossing New Horizons mundanities that I enjoyed with the original title all those years ago. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.